Genesis chapter 1 and 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. Genesis chapter 1, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. We're going to be in Genesis for a little bit, and then we're going to jump over, and I'm going to hit uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. We, you should be able to find Genesis real quickly. Genesis 1. When you have it, say amen. Yeah. Amen. The third verse said, and God said. The fifth verse says, and God called. The sixth verse said, and God said. And the seventh uh, verse says, and God made. And the ninth verse says, and God said. And the eleventh verse is said, and God said. On the fourteenth verse it said, and God said. And on the twentieth verse it says, and God said. On the twenty-second verse it said, and God blessed. On the twenty-fourth verse it says, and God said. On the twenty-sixth verse it said, and God said. If you flip over to the twenty-ninth verse, it said, and God said. On the second Corinthians chapter number five, verse number seven, don't go there. It says, and we walk by faith and not by sight. I need you to tell one or two people, I feel preaching here now, tell one or two people, say, say it until you see it. That was the wrong person. Tell somebody, say it until you see it. Uh, and your theme is out of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, now faith. So I want to give you a subtopic, which I never do. I want you to say faith it until you make it. Let me see if I can preach here. Uh, the Lord sent me here this afternoon to release this quick word of faith, but a sure word that is going to take at least 10 of you to the next level. It is clear to me that the devil has tricked some of you to stop saying what God has said and has promised you that you would see. In other words, some of you have gotten discouraged because what you wanted to come to pass has not yet come to pass and you surmise that you didn't hear what you heard. Mm. Adrian Rogers said this quote, faith is not merely believing in spite of evidence, it's obeying in spite of the consequence. Oh, God, help me to preach here. Here is a word from for five of you. It is a word for five of you. The promise is the promise, and the promise has not changed. Tell your neighbor the promise is still the promise. But I came here this afternoon to work on a devil that has been trying to keep you quiet. Proverbs 18 and 29 says, uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. So the Lord told me to tell you that there is victory in your mouth. Uh, I need you to help me. I told you, I said there is victory in your mouth. Your circumstances may not seem like victory, but the victory is in your mouth. So that's why it behooves you to watch what you say. Because your words have producing power. Your words have creative power power. We read in the text that God said, God made, and then God bless. And it's the enemy's job to get you to speak negatively so that the negative can start to take root in your life. Uh, think, your, th think of your words as seeds. Seeds are small, but they produce a lot. Some of you don't understand that your words are small seeds, but if you're going to produce a harvest in your life, so if you're planting negative things and saying things that, watch this, saying things that God has not said, the law is that you have to reap what you sow. But not only do you reap what you sow, but tap three people of five and tell them, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. It's important for you to know that you don't plant and harvest in the same season. Some of you are reaping things you sowed with your words a long time ago. Be careful how you say, I'm broke. That's a seed that gets planted and it has to come back. Instead, you ought to say, I'm just between paychecks or between finances. <laughs> Be careful how you say, I'm fat. Because you have what you say. Be careful how you say, I can't take it anymore. Be careful how you say, I'm sick. 
Instead, say, even if you feel sick, say, I'm healed. Some of you say, I'm tired. And although you might be tired in your body, you have what you say. Uh, some of you say, I can't. Some of you say, I never. You're going to, re you're going to reproduce all what you have said. And some of you are reaping the harvest of your words and you're getting mad with God, but you planted that. These things seem innocent, but if you take inventory of your life, you have gotten most of what you have been confessing. We underestimate the law of confession, the power of confession, but you have the power to command your day, your week, your month, and your year. I declare, I, I dare you to start confessing what God has said. Let me help you real quick, and I'll give you some points, and we'll be done. Your thoughts produce your words. Your words produce your actions, and your actions produce your environment. I'll give you an example. Most of us just don't get up and go to the store. Most of us think about going to the store, and then they say, I got to get up and go to the store, and then eventually you find yourself at the store because you said it. You said it out loud. But if you want to see things change in your, li your life, you first got to change your language and change the way you think. This is going to be the hardest journey because the devil knows that if you change the way you think, that you've won half of the battle. And in order to change the way you think, you have to put yourself in environments, watch this, you have to put yourself in environments that contribute to better thinking. If you're going to change the way you think, you have to put yourself in environments that contribute to better thinking. So that might mean you have to change your friend set. That might mean you don't go everywhere your family invites you. Because your family can be some of the negative people you have ever. You got to put yourself in prayer service where there's faith talk going on. You got to put yourself in Bible school and Sunday school. And some of you need to go back to college or go get some training or, or get a men mentorship or get into a bigger circle. You cannot expect to listen to the same things and do the same things and get different results. If you want something different, you have to do something different. So the first thing is you got to change the way you think. T t holler back at me, change the way you think. Then when you change the way you think, you got to change the way you speak. Start making positive confessions. I know you're not rich, but say I'm rich. Say I'm above. Come on, say it with me. Say I'm above. Say I'm out. Say I'm an owner. Somebody say I'm an entrepreneur. Now, to some folks around you, they're going to think that you're lying, but you're not lying. You're confessing what you want to see. Uh, you're confessing, I am the owner. I am not an employee, but I am an employer. So whatever you want to see, you got to change your thinking. Then you got to have your thinking to line up with what you're speaking. Number three, I'm almost done. Number three, don't let your current environment affect your thoughts or speech. What did I say? I said, don't allow your current environment to affect your thoughts or speech. A lot of times we can't speak positively is because we don't see positively. All we see is doom and despair. But never allow your, never let your now determine your destiny. God has the power to change your destiny and watch this, speed up your process. If you say it, then God can perform it. Ah, I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. I said if you say it, then God can perform it. You've got to get you some God, good God said. God said you will be above only and not believe. God said you will be a lender and not a borrower. 
God said you'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come, and blessed when you go. God said. God said he will be a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless. God said that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. God said that you shall be the first and not the last. God said he shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. God said that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. God said, I need you to tell somebody God said it. Let me help you. The key to the faith is, is it has to be connected. Your faith has to be connected to what God said. Because many of us are believing God for stuff he never said. Then we become frustrated when it doesn't happen because we thought we were operating in faith when we were really operating in foolishness. And sometimes there can be a thin line between faith and foolishness. If God didn't say go buy the new car, then keep riding in that old one. If God didn't say move into that new house, then live into that house until he says it. Because what he says, he also has to take care and provide for. I said what he says, he also has to take care and provide for. But when you go out there and make moves your own self, then you got to keep it. So that's where, because we have gotten into this thing, uh, especially with this 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 new uh, uh, word of faith movement that j just tell people just go out and say anything, anything you want, anything, uh, just say it. Just you know, well, what if I want somebody else's uh, somebody else's wife? Can I just say that? No, there's some boundaries on this thing. Amen. Philippians one and six says, being confident of this very thing, he which has begun a good work in you. We'll perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So what did I say? I said, number one, change the way you think. Repeat it. Change the way you think. The second thing I said was change the way you speak. Somebody say, change the way you speak. Don't, uh, number three, I said, don't allow your, don't let your in current environment affect your speech. That's too much for y'all to repeat. But I want to add something to it. Don't allow your mouth to agree with your situation either. Last thing, change the way you act. Let your thoughts, your speech, and your act all be on the same level. You cannot think negatively, speak halfway positively, and think your actions are going to line up. You've got to have the whole thing lined up. If you want to be married, start acting like you're married now. What does that mean? Keep your house clean. Go take some cooking classes. Learn how to clean the bathroom. Because all of y'all, some of y'all think marriage is this sex and a good time. It's more to marriage than sex. A lot more. You got to do a lot more than that. So if, if you if you got to you got to know that you're gonna have to take care of some things. You're gonna have to here here is marriage, I'll tell you, compromise. Y'all don't like this preaching. If you want a new car, then take care of your old car. And ride it like it's a new car. Because y'all know when we get a new car. We, you know, don't don't get in here with that McDonald's in this new car. Wait a minute, don't scratch my seats, don't. But in when our old car, oh come on, it's this 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 old thing. But if you want to start acting like you got something new, then that will avoid people telling you that oh now you got that new car, you acting new. No, I was acting like this with my old car. If you want to be wealthy. Start acting like you're wealthy now. And here's the thing. You don't have to have a whole bunch of money to act like you're wealthy. You can go to the thrift shop and get you a $2.50 skirt, fix it up with a blouse and accessorize it, and people will thank you a million dollars. Thank you got that from Neiman Marcus and you got it from Good Shepherd. You got to learn how to work this thing. 
and look like something. And when you look good, you feel better. And when you feel better, you'll talk better. It's going to look crazy. But my question is to you, and I'll close this book. What do you have to lose? Walking by faith is going to look crazy when God is giving you something. But what do you have to lose if, if, if that is what God said? I said, say it until you see it. I said, faith it until you make it. Not fake it, faith it. F-A-I-T-H. Faith it. Faith it. Y'all thought I said fake it? No, faith. Faith it. Until walk by faith, talk by faith, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Listen, here's the thing. Many of us have gotten caught up because we, many of our eyes have really talked us out of what God has said. Can I say this? And then I'm, I'm really going to take up the offering. Watch this. The children of Israel, God had promised them the, uh, the, the, the promised land. He said, you're going to get the promised land. But here they are in the wilderness for years and years and years and years. But watch this. In the wilderness is where God did his greatest miracles for the Israelites. Not when they got over. If you look in the Bible, when they got over into the promised land, they did not have as many miracles as they had when they were in the wilderness. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying that if you're in the wilderness, it's a good place for God to give you a miracle. I said, if you're going through, it's a good place for God to give you a miracle. Oh, so don't get discouraged. Don't get despondent because God does his best work in the wilderness. I'm going to close. How many times I said I'm going to close? Oh. The enemy is going to fight you in the place that you struggle with. Watch this. Until I got to the point that I'm going to trust God in my finances, the enemy would test me in that area. So he would, I'd be like, is there holes in my pocket or something? You know, because every piece of money I get, I couldn't keep it. And, and I mean, it was just crazy. And, you know, and, and, and repossessions and, and people coming and calling bill collectors and all that type of stuff. And it would make me, watch this, it would make me depressed sometimes. Until I said, you know what? God is my, the word did say he was my provider. He did say he was going to provide for me. So I, be, I got that word and I started getting that word. Because my wife can tell you when we didn't have no money, I would be, I would be hell to live with. <laughs> but now when stuff come in our finances, the devil don't test us as much in the finances because he know I ain't worried at all. Because I believe, I don't care what come, what go, we still going to eat. We still going to have the house. We still go, I believe God in that. He said, I shall supply all your, according to what? His riches in glory. Not your riches in your bank account. I walk by that thing now. I talk by that thing now. Because I believe God in that area. I also believe God in healing. I walk in the healing. I talk in the healing. I don't pay no attention. Now, I do what the doctors say do, but I still confess healing. Amen. Because I'm walking by faith. Say it until you see it. Faith it. F-A-I-T-H. Until you make it. Did you get... Agape Worldwide Ministries and Pastor Enzo James Fields invites you to come worship with us in Springfield, Virginia. We're located 7240 FNG Boudinot Drive in Springfield, Virginia. Call 703-372-1174. Agape Worldwide Ministries. Real love, real people, real church.